Hello and welcome to another episode of the Roach Coach Podcast, the journey to create the new metal canon. My name is Lauren Kozlowski. With me, as always, the original Roach Rider, Mr. Matt Nas. Keep it rolling, baby. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, back with you, back for another episode of Roach Coach, creating this new metal canon one album at a time. This week, it is all about who's tweeting. Who's tweeting? That's right. We're going over feedback. We're going over questions. We're going over lists. We're going over so much, Matt. This episode, jam-packed. So much going on. So much going on, and we only have a little bit of time to talk about it. You might say, Lauren, isn't this your show? This is Matt's show. Don't you make to decide how much time you have or do not have? This is true, but I'm creating a sense of urgency. All right? Don't worry. You're pretty little head about that. (laughs) All right. Stop stop peeking that hard behind the curtain. <laughs> Listen, I want to talk about something right off the top, Matt. And this is saying this is the thing that every hardcore roach rider day one person is sitting there in their car on their stereo, washing dishes. They want to hear us talk about it. It's the Patreon, Matt. Oh, that sweet Patreon. Give people me the love, juice. They love the Patreon and new people signing up all the time. Patreon, of course, has our exclusive miniseries, The Pact, Episode 3, now live. Check it out. Ooh, baby. Hear us talk all about Fall Out Boy's breakthrough record from Under the Quirk Tree. Matt, applying the hero's journey. Us, diving into our history with this album. The boys in Fall Out Boy? Nice boys? Mean boys? You gotta listen to the app. Gotta listen to that app. Gotta listen to that app patreon.com slash roach coach podcast become a patreon member listen to that app enjoy those as, as well enjoy the previous episodes of the pact also enjoy our exclusive episode gavin rosdale Ooh, so much and also you get to vote i don't know if you knew this matt but our patreon members got to vote on side project summer love that which means this summer we will be doing the side projects of one Chino Marino of Deftones. That is correct. So much is happening here on the coach. And on top of that, Matt, do you know what this summer is besides hot and inviting? Mm. It is also our eighth anniversary. That's correct. Eight years of the coach coming up, coming Holy up fast. Sh- wow. Coming up fast. Unbelievable. And and we were like, how do we celebrate eight years of the coach? And really, there's only one way, and that is at the Roach Coach Meetup 2024 at Limp Biscuits Loserville Tour, July 23rd, 2024, Pine Knob Music Theater. Clarkston, Michigan. That's right, baby. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. Matt's wife's going to be there. Jenny's going to be there. Jenny's husband's going to be there. And hopefully you, the Roach Riders and Indigo Angels, will be there as well to join That are in a convenient driving distance. You know what? I enjoy where your head's at, Matt, but I'm going to throw it out there. If it's even a little bit inconvenient to you, still try to make it out. Let's make this one for the record books, baby. (laughs) Please don't fly to Detroit. Get on the Concord (laughs) 2. Detroit, Mosher Max, please stay where you are. Listen, if that's too expensive for our British listeners, for our European listeners, boats. <laughs> Get on a boat, head on over. Our ports, our ports are crazy right now, but everything's tell them, cool. Tell them you're there for the coach. Just roll in, say anything to declare, and you say, yeah. I'm here to roll in with the coach. Loserville 2024. And they're going to go, oh, the Limbisca Tour? Riff Raff's hosting? On, in you go. On your in, way. In you go. In you go. So mark that on your calendars because that's where the coach will be. Road Ooh. coach will be representing on the lawn team fries, burgers, brats, good vibes. Also, we all have our fingers crossed that we will get to experience the riff in person. Ooh, shit. It would be nice. Right It'd now, nice. on, on the current shows they're doing, which tend to be festival ones, the big thing that they've been doing is they've been opening and closing with break stuff, which I'm not mad about. No. but Good call. I would 
truly, truly appreciate it if they would play Out of Style Live. I would appreciate it. Just sending that out there. Sending it into the ether, into the internet ether. All well, right. Yes, Matt. I put a little signal flare out in the air. Mm-hmm. Speaking of our Patreon members. Yes. After our li- last conversation where I said, Charles Mansion live stream Patreon. Mm-hmm. I then went to the Patreon and it, just ask, is anybody actually interested in any live streams? And it was a resounding yeah, they're okay. That's the stuff. <laughs> it was it was it was met with favorable results. Some people, I well, here were your choices. Here is our beautiful choices. Yes, mm-hmm. give me all the live streams you got. Fifty-seven percent of the vote, very popular choice. Mm-hmm. Number two, no, I hate live streams. Fourteen percent of the vote, and then number three, with twenty-nine percent of the vote, says I like live streams, but I'll probably watch it later. Listen, this is this is the era we're in now, Matt. We watch at our leisure. Appointment That's television, correct. gone. All right? Dunzo. Well, Game I'm of- telling you right now. Yes, Matt. To break out the calendar. Oh. Because I am signing Matt Noss up. Okay. And maybe good friend Charles Manchin up. Oh, boy. On May 2nd, Thursday. So Thursday, May 2nd. All right. At... What's the time that I actually could do? <laughs> this is perfect. This is stuff. Jeff choosing the time during the announcement. During this, the announcement. This is why people check out Roach Coach every week. That's right. This tight broadcasting. This absolutely is where the money is. That's right. I know that I could do 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> does that work out for everybody else? <laughs> Hey, wait, 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 we've got 30% say we'll watch whenever. True. Good point. You know what, Matt? I say, you know what? Just just pick a date and just pop in, send a little signal flare up, say, Charles Mansion, live, check it out now, and just see who pops up. Just see who pops up in the feed. And that's it. That's it. I mean, hey, and we're going to give it a shot. This is the thing. Mm-hmm. This is a test run. Mm-hmm. We're going to say May 2nd, Thursday, May 2nd, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There it is. 30 minutes guaranteed. Anything past that is a bonus. Right. So just to to put that in perspective for everybody. So that means that if you live in Los Angeles, this would be at 7 p.m. your time. Easy. Yeah. If you're in Denver, this is 8 p.m. your time. Super easy. If you're in Caracas... This is exactly your time. We're in the same time zone, somehow, <laughs> some way, according to the world clock on my iPhone. Um, if you are in Honolulu, it's four o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, what a dream. Look at that. Just to see this beautiful face. That's right. If you're in Sydney, Australia, 1242, it's your lunch. Watch Matt with your lunch. Okay. Oh. Plus, they're forward 14 hours. So it's actually their Friday lunch so how good is that how good is that head into the weekend with style absolutely and listen if you're in ireland that's three o'clock in the morning (laughs) maybe sorry maybe you just had a bad dream maybe you just had a bad dream and you woke up and you said what's going on in the roast crush patreon (laughs) you wake wake up "Ah, oh, 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 oh god oh god oh god oh Oh, okay, and just grab my phone and patreon.com slash roach coach podcast. Oh, Van Noss, I'm feeling better already. There it is. That's right. That's the thing. If you do wake up from a bad dream, Roach Coach is here for you. Yeah. To walk you through it and to remind you, you have all your clothes on. You have not just given a presentation nude. You didn't. All right. You're no longer in college. You do, you're not late for a test. Don't worry. If you're falling, check it out. Yeah. Floor floor under your feet. There you are. That's the Roach Coach promise. We're going to bring you you back from a bad dream. Uh, I think that's the perfect segue, Matt, into one of your favorite segments. Who's touring? Who's touring? Matt, 
there's a band that people tell us all the time they would like us to do another episode on, and we've only done one of their albums, and that band is Il Nino. Ooh, Il Nino. Il Nino, we've only done one of their albums on the show. People always ask us to do another one. We haven't done one. We never did one, honestly, with Jenny, because would, Jenny would be like, I'll be like, you want to do Il Nino? And she'd be like, no. And then that was it. Kind of just went on. But now here we are in this sort of post-Jenny era, and... uh you know, if there's maybe we'll find somebody, you know, because here's the thing. I send little mini lists to all of our guests and El Nino's been in a few of them. No one's bitten. No one's bitten. But mm. if you are biting for more El Nino live, they will be going out on tour this summer for the 25 years of Latin metal tour across Love it. Europe, United States and the UK. And the U.S. leg has this set of openers flaw a killer's confession the crowned redefined and scarlet view listen to that now based on that number of openers everyone will get a tidy 11 minutes of stage time to knock out some hits for you because they gotta they gotta clean up because they gotta make room for the next one and then also based off of that Il Nino, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming 25 years, 25 minutes. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> a minute every year. Same back line for every band. <laughs> Just is, changing a drum head. I, unless, unless the shows start at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. If they started, oh, that's the worst. Remember, like when they would do that, where it's just like, oh, yeah, it's 20 bands. Starts at 2 in the afternoon. Make sure you catch our set at 3.45 p.m. Listen, if you could just catch us at 3.30, we, we're uh, we're playing in a sand pit. You got to check us out. It's great. I know you're, you're going to love it. You're going to have a great work time. Early. Um, oh, no, so Matt, yeah. Noss, Matt Noss and the Roach Coach live stream. That's 10 o'clock. <laughs> 10 o'clock p.m. Unless PM. you're in. Unless it's you're seven in hours Europe. after our set. Europe. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Uh, according to this, they are not playing our beloved machine shop, but I believe that only time only time will tell the, the, they'll book it eventually um but i mean they're playing a number of shows in texas they're playing austin houston corpus christi dallas um also playing two uh two shows in illinois in urbana and joylet and they round out their uh tour in the united states in ringle wisconsin at q and z expo center 25 years of el nino and uh, possibly, I don't know, possibly 38 minutes total of everybody. So <laughs> check it out. You can Good get on those... Nino. Nice yeah. work, guys. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you can get those tickets at the internet.com. Oh, I've heard of this. Uh, yeah, you got to check it out. Um, Matt, we love a list. Love a list. Over at the newmetalagenda.com, Holiday Kirk and the team to put together a list of the 15 greatest and 10 worst post grunge songs of all time. Normally this is outside of our purview, but lately I feel like there is this thought process. New metal is back. We did it. Congratulations. Shake hands, glad hand, get some hugs around. But now the other genres are like, what about us? What about me? Mm. I'm over here. I'm a little post grunge. Look at me. Am I back yet? And sadly, the answer appears to be yes. No. Because we have, of course, this, I'm going to say it, ill-fated Creed reunion tour that's going to happen this summer. Uh, we have... Um, Why is it ill-fated if it's, it hasn't happened yet? It's ill-fated, Matt. Because <laughs> it's going to be Creed live. And that is an ill-fated situation. All right? <laughs> I have a feeling, this is just a feeling I have, all right? But there's a lot of people that are like, yeah, get the boys together. Everybody in the truck, hand out Gatorades. We're going to go see Creed live. We're going to oh, yeah. have the best time. We're going to go. Oh, yeah. And you're going to I've seen I've seen the snippets from the current concerts, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, he, right now it's from the Scott Stapp solo stuff. Yeah. So you're going to get there. Reed's going to start playing one of the songs you know. Higher. Higher. Arms Wide Open. My Own Prison. 
and my sacrifice <laughs> my sacrifice one of those ones that you're like yeah i know this one i heard this song a million times let's fucking go but then they're gonna play more creed songs that you don't know and then you're gonna realize wait hold on hold the phone <laughs> hold on this sucks ass. <laughs> this is really not great this is bad news Seems like I just liked that first album a lot. I think I just liked like like the one song, or I, I ironically liked. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm putting my money out there now. This is gonna be. Uh, this there's gonna be a lot of uh, buyer's remorse. That's what I'm putting out there. But anyway, back to this list: the 15 wow. greatest and 10 worst post grunge songs of all time. Um, they did the work uh, on on uh, compiling this list of yarlers. I will yeah, say, this is yeah. Th that is my biggest issue with post grunge. Yeah, is that uh, you? Her right. is a. <laughs> um. So I'll run down this list for you. So for the greatest, uh, fifteen to one. Um, you've got Shine Down, Second Chance. Do I know this song? I don't know this song. Okay. Uh, we have Injected with their song Faithless. Faithless. Injected is a band who's been recommended to us, who have always taken to be a new metal band, but apparently, made, but I mean, the new metal post grunge border, you know, it's open, it's wide. People shift sides all the time. See, they're fine again. This lets you know how bad things are doing, how bad things are going in the world of post grunge, if this is considered one of the greatest 15. <laughs> when's our lady peace making an appearance on this <laughs> let's keep it rolling okay number 12 stained so far away okay as a as the resident staniac yes. um what yeah what do you think I, buddy i was you know well i mean i love the start here stains 2003 2003 release fortune shades of gray is not a good record <laughs> that's the Classic. start but they said that one standout is lead single so far away uh, which I, I mean, once again, I guess like if we're thinking of post grunge, I guess that's what stained. I don't know. This is like a, I look at this just like, maybe I just dislike the whole sound so much that even the, the concept of 15 greatest hits me in like a, like now nah, we're, things are still bad out there. You know, things are still tough. Uh, and also if we're, if we're counting something like so far away as a post grunge song from stained, mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure these other songs are. I think it's one artist per on the list. I would put a song like "It's Been a While" as a stronger post grunge song than "So Far Away." Speaking for myself, uh, I, think have, I, I think you have a good argument. I think what happens with that record is it more often than not gets lumped into the new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and then it wouldn't. It doesn't even come in for. Right, I think you're yeah. right. That might be it. Um, also, I, I mean, I want to. I want to just put respect on the whole new metal agenda. Oh, team. they're doing they the damn to, thing. Yeah, they of had course. To sit down with a lot of songs that aren't on either of these lists to make this list. You know, they had to do the research. Mm -hmm. Number eleven, Chad Kroger featuring Chosie Scott Hero. Okay, I'm gonna give him that one. I'm gonna. Give this is one. this is a big dub for eleven. Probably properly placed. Maybe a little low. But yeah, this well, honestly, the next one for me feels too low. At, mm. number 10, at number 10, Puddle of Mud Blurry. Matt, I know which, you're. Which know, one is this? Which one is blurry? So blurry. <laughs> that one. Perfect. Hey, you're welcome. Listen, Blurry is, blurry is the best song by Puddle of Mud. And it is, it is definitely post grunge. It's definitely, but it, the crack, oh yeah, you can see the crack from space. But it's still, honestly, for my ears, that's the peak of the form. Puddle of mud, blurry. I don't really get mad about it. I think it has really good production. I think his his. Uh, He's he's the other thing about the puddle of mud guy is that unlike a lot of these other yarlers who were taking their main inspiration from uh, Pearl Jam and from Eddie Vedder 
and then some people who were trying to do like a like first stuntable pilots album imitation. Mm-hmm. The guy in Puddle of Mud, his inspiration was Kurt Cobain. Huge, so he was yeah, one hundred percent Kurt Cobain impression. And I think that's probably it's one of those like in the uh, the the sign what they call the 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 sin line whatever like deep into the audio file it's like he's he's tapped into some sort of kurt cobain frequency that hits my ears and goes that's okay that's okay kurt raised me i get it that's okay so um yeah so i say glad it's 10 should be higher number nine crossfade cold i don't know this song don't know this song don't know it uh number eight i will also say i don't actively seek out post crunch Matt, you don't you don't and you it know, finds you mm-hmm. when you're when you're in a sporting goods store mm-hmm. or yeah. or you're sitting you're sitting in an arena right yeah like, that's where post grunge lives still to this day yeah i mean it'll find you there sometimes it'll find you sometimes in a supermarket some will sneak through it'll sneak through the mix you'll get hit with some post grunge uh yeah so yeah now we're getting a, we're getting a little deep cutty at this point now we have epidemic walk away i don't know this band i don't know this song yeah um yeah I, that feels like just it's i'm 15 greatest and it's a band i've never heard of that's tough that's tough but it might be a phenomenal well, matt, song matt let's also keep in mind this is a new metal agenda list our boy True. Holiday Kirk is digging deep into them. He trenches. about that life. He about that life. He's a, and this is also a Holiday Kirk blurb. He wrote the blurb on this one. Um, so this is one. This was one of his picks. Number seven, Creed, My Sacrifice. I get it. I guess. I get it. I, I, my I get sacrifice. It. Once again, though, I'm just, I look at this and I see Puddle of Mud at 10 and I'm like, what are you, what's going on? Come on. Number six, Three Days Grace, I Hate Everything About You. Um, interesting this, choice i know this, this yeah like these uh, what is it about these bands that make it already feel like i broke up with this girl like i don't <laughs> this is music here's the thing this is the that's the problem with post grunge sometimes is you listen to the song and you immediately go you go oh fuck did i just get dumped like you can be uh, by yourself yeah you, you could be single already and you listen to a post grunge song and go fuck did i just get dumped and you're like, no, I've been single the whole time. What's what's happened? It's insane. The dump, you've just been dumped energy. It's nuts. Uh, number five, Smile Empty Soul, Bottom of a Bottle. I feel like we've talked about this song. Um, but uh, it's number mm. five here. Now, things get real wild at number four. Nirvana, you know you're right. And this is one where... Kirk makes the case, Kirk wrote the blurb for this one, that because of how this song came to be, not so much how it was written, but how it came to be in to, you know, in our ears and in, in its release, is that it is sort of the ultimate, in a way some would consider the ultimate post-grunge song, because it's the ultimate grunge band, unreleased track that comes back, that wipes the floor with everybody who's been trying to imitate it. And then it's like almost like Kirk Cobain coming back from the dead and being like, let me show you boys how it's done. And the thing about you know you're right is fucking great. <laughs> Dude. It's good. Yeah. It's yeah. that <sighs> they could write a great song. He, he he knew how to write a song. Nirvana, good band. Check them out. I've heard I've heard great things. Check I've heard them great out. Things. <laughs> check them out. Worthwhile. Uh, check Worthwhile out. listen. Yeah, yeah, check them out. Nirvana.com. Uh number three, Lifehouse, hanging by a moment. Wow. That, yeah, I, right. it's it's definitely up there. It's up there. That's that's another one. Every now and again, this is the thing. I look at this list and there's songs in here where I'm like, never in a million years. In that I would like listen to them. And then other ones where I'm like, I'm not familiar with you. I don't know you. And then you hit me with a lifehouse at number three, and I'm like, respect. Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I worked. I worked retail in 2000. So yeah, of course I've heard life houses hanging by a moment. Listen, if you were at, if you were in the Meyer checkout line <laughs> in the fall of 2000, you were here and laying it like I was hanging by a moment. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You might have been living for it. It might have been the highlight of your goddamn day. Yeah. Understand. Number two, Nickelback. How you remind me. 
No notes. No notes. No notes. No notes. You're right. Number one. Fuel. Hemorrhage in my hands. Okay. I don't know that one. What? That's impossible, Matt. It probably is. This one, it's number one. So we're just going to listen to a couple seconds of Fuel's hemorrhage in my hands. You're going to know this. There's no way you don't know this song. Okay. Fuel hemorrhage in my hands. Okay, here we go. The problem with this is that it sounds like a trillion other songs. So I'm going to have to wait till it gets to the chorus. But I think I know it. Yes. Okay. 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 Yes, I know this song. Yeah, I was gonna say, man. You I was know worried. That. I was like, "What?" You know it. But fuel again just makes me feel like I, I'm having a bad breakup. You want to like, talk about it? You want to talk about it? Look, I, I shouldn't have started the relationship in the first place, Lauren. Okay. Ultimately, was it you or was it her? Or was it both of you? Ultimately, it was us. There it is. There it is. Crank up that hemorrhage. (laughs) Uh, I I guess for me, it's it's one of those things where I I look at it and I it's me, Yarl and Carl. I I see it. I see the list, and I think there there is a level of uh, representation versus ultimately like song quality because I see big blurb i read all the blurbs and he makes a very strong point for what puts hemorrhage at number one but for like songs that i would willfully listen to blurry with it blurry with a bullet i gotta really i gotta be here blurry i'm sorry thanks for watching this episode of roach coach on youtube unfortunately we do not play the music here on youtube because we want to avoid those sweet sweet copyright strikes but you can check out in the description we have the links to the podcast itself which includes all the clips from the music that we hear and back to the show things are blurry everything's Everything's so messed up yeah i don't know i don't know you sound a little you sound a little bit like an old man who's about to go <laughs> least will and test me out. Uh, all right, Matt. So Goodbye, a- future. Harold <laughs> <laughs> and Tired. Here for what is this guy? Louis Louisiana, Louisiana porch guy? Hell no. no. Yeah. I, I, I think, yeah, you're, you're that or you're one of those uh, people that uh, lived with Brad Pitt and Snatch. Um, just undecipherable. Okay. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Those guys. So that's the 15 top, according to NewMetalAgenda.com. Here's the 10 worst. Ooh. Number 10, Stone Sour Bother. No arguments here. Get this song out of here. Nice. Number eight, my darkest days, porn star dancing. I'm fairly sure Zach Wild. Yes, I'm fairly sure that our good friend Kevin Kenny recommended this song, and I'm pretty sure he said this is a good song. So I'm just gonna leave that there. Number eight, tantric astounding. You had me at tantric, in that (laughs) I knew that it would be bad because it's tantric. Number seven, see their fake it. In a way, impressive. See there on the best list and also on the worst worst list. list. Two sides Uh, of the same coin. Indeed. The same terrible coin. Uh, Number six. Oh, another one. Puddle of Mud. She Hates Me. Now that song I know. That song sucks. I'm going to have to push back on this because my dad thinks this song is very, very funny. And I think he might actually unironically like it. She fucking hates hates me. me. Yeah. Um, So, yeah. So that one. Wait a second. Nope. Mm-hmm. No, it is the dad thing. Mm-hmm. Told me that my dad would be like, "Oh, this is that good time rock and roll?" Oh, <laughs> she hates me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I put mm-hmm. I put something like mm-hmm. that in the mm-hmm. in the same genre as like a, a you know as a Buck Cherry crazy bitch, dude. You know this I mean? yeah, this and then George Thorogood comes on with Bad to the Bone, like this what is just... an incredible trio. You got a night right there. Puddle oh. of Mud, She Hates Me, into Crazy Bitch, into Bad to the Bone? Yeah. Well, right remember when we, we were talking right about now. when we were talking about Skid Row and Buck Cherry touring mm-hmm. together? Yeah. I'm like, they're about that life. 
<laughs> if you if you're into that, mm-hmm. you are here to have a good time that this guy would call not the best time. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Number five, Creed one. Exactly. Exactly. I, this is do one I, of the song. Do no we man. Listen, man, we're not listen. listening to it. We're not listening to it. But this is what I'm saying. This is one of those songs you're gonna get there. Oh yeah, me and my boys are going to Creed tonight. Okay, have fun. And then you're there. Creed start playing one, and you're like, "Fuck, the fuck is this? Oh no, oh no." You know. And then you know what'll happen? It'll be the worst luck. You'll go to hide in the bathroom, and it'll be the one show in the history of the world where they're piping it into the bathroom. You can't even get away from it. Inescapable. Inescapable. You gotta leave the gotta leave the venue. Number four, three doors down, citizen soldier. I I believe that. Checks out. No arguments there. (laughs) No notes. Yep. Number three, stained lane. I love how so much overlap there is. There's just like (laughs) so much overlap. Uh, I can I can say this is a classic grand opening grand closing. (laughs) Really? I can tell you that Lane by Stained is a tribute to Lane Staley of Allison Chains and is truly truly brutal it is tough stuff get a note from your parents before hitting play all right do get not go in parents listen get permission get permission are you saying lauren i'm in my 40s all right i'm older I, what do i need i'm just saying it's good to get a permission note run this by your mom and dad run it talk to them talk to your parents and say i love you mom and dad i was going to listen to lane by stained from their 2003 album 14 shades of gray and your dad's gonna grab you by the shoulder and maybe things are a little tough and a little weird but i believe if you say that to him he's gonna look you in the eyes and go i i thought i thought we raised you a little bit better than that <laughs> I, I don't think we should do, i don't think you should do that i don't think you should do that and then he gives you a copy of the first stained record and it's like re-listen to mud shovel there you go. Yeah, Just that's re-listen right. to Mud Shovel. Listen to Mud Shovel. That's where you need to be at. Absolutely. Number two, Nickelback, something in your mouth. Number two on the first list. Number two. <laughs> Hold it. Were they number two on the first list? They were number two on the first list. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Balloons. Yeah. It's, it's Balloons a party. Coming up. Yeah. Uh, listen, Nickelback's sex songs are tough. They're really nasty. I think it's because like, I don't want to think about Chad Kroger doing it. But the thing about it, though, is that they still feel too mechanical and designed. Like, they're not... When you listen to a slinky sex jam from somebody like Scott Weiland or Axl Rose in his prime, you're like, this oh, guy... Oh, I believe it. This guy made it, might have recorded this song while fucking... He might have pulled out and then gone to the microphone. Absolutely. That's right. That's that's the Axl Rose rhythm method. Yeah. The rhythm of the song. <laughs> I gotta go. That's right. I gotta record his verse. Eh, eh, eh. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm back. Don't worry. She got sex. Exactly. But when it comes to Nickelback and Nickelback sex songs, you you can see the schematic on the wall. It it feels so designed, and it's like he's like, but then also when he says certain lines, it just comes across as so leaden and gross that you're just like, there. Not only was there not a woman in the room when they wrote the song, <laughs> there probably wasn't a woman within like three square miles in any direction. They were just like, yeah, this is n- nary a woman got a hint of this. And it's, uh, they're always so gross, but also so clunky and mechanical that you listen to it and you're just like, this really seems like, you know, he heard about sex and he thought it sounded pretty well, cool. Well, I, I wrote these songs in a junior high school, all boys junior high school. Yeah, really. Yeah. I heard, I heard there's girls at the, I heard there's girls across the lake. That's the vibe. Mm. Imagine, oh. imagine a man writing like 20 sex jams, but his only experience with women is that he heard there might be some across the lake. Yeah, you got to be careful because you, you do the wrong girl and like the first five layers of your penis will fall off. That's right. True yeah. thing I heard from a guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. That's that true. doesn't. That's just how true, are man. we? How are we all here? then? Well, no, it's if, if you fuck the wrong girl. Oh, that's right. That's, that's right. Thing you got to keep in mind. That's yeah. right. Matt. <laughs> um, the girl with the vat of acid. 
That's right. Don't. Yeah. Listen, if you meet a girl. <laughs> use this jar of acid for a girl. <laughs> listen, that's the problem. You don't know. You, you've only heard about girls because they might be across the lake. Okay. Oh, that's true. And so when you get over there, you get on the other side of the lake, anything you see, you're like, yeah. is this a girl? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't have swam across the lake. I'm woozy. Mm-hmm. I stumbled into a laboratory. Absolutely. And then you <laughs> filled with jars and you actually put your dick in a jar of acid because you're like this is this is the classic farmer's joke Mm -hmm. you can sleep in the barn but don't put your dick in these holes that's right that's right matt all right matt number one theory of a dead man it doesn't my life i I hate theory of a dead man they're bad yeah they're so not great if they're your favorite band no matt (laughs) <laughs> don't do it you love to apologize don't do it don't do it you, look if you're listening to fucking roach coach and theory of a dead man well, is your well, here, favorite band well here's the thing matt if theory of a dead man is your favorite band then you probably just call them theory because oh, God, you're so busy you're so busy you don't have time for the rest of it <sighs> one See, of the one of the shortest relationships of my life where it was just a couple of dates oh this by is a couple i mean oh here like, we go yeah. This was like this was somebody I knew. Uh-huh. But they we were both entwined at the time. Uh-huh. Met up years later and it was like, "Whoa. Hey, we had a thing. Like maybe we should see what this thing is." And I I had tickets to go see Sigur Rós at the State Theater. And they were like front row tickets. Uh-huh. And she was like, "Oh, yeah, I'll absolutely come with you." I just saw Our Lady the other day. <laughs> I was like, uh oh. Uh oh. She doesn't have time for peace, Matt. There's no have time for peace. There's no, listen, if she doesn't have time for peace with Our Lady Peace, she will not, you will never have any peace in this relationship. I can't imagine how bad that experience was for her to sit through the esoteric noise scape that is Sigur Rose in the front row next to a guy who's like way too into it. A horrible night for her, for sure. Uh, she called me at a bar, uh, a Dave and Buster's. I was playing. The story was grows in the telling, Matt. <laughs> so I you try. Got, I, you got a Rose concert. Yeah. To a Dave and Buster's. Yeah, so like the, the like it just wasn't g- great and we connected in all the wrong ways. Like mm-hmm. connecting through similar traumatic experiences and then it was like, oh, this is not going to be a romantic thing. Like you could just feel that start to dissolve where it's like, oh, we're we're either going to be friends or we're going to be nothing. And then she called me David Busters. And it was breaking up and it was just like, yeah, well, I guess I'll see you later. And we never spoke again. Matt, so this woman called you. So you were at a Dave and Buster's. Yes. And she called you and you were like, I don't think this is going to, I guess, I guess I'll see you later. And then you went and played Time Crisis. I mean, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. I honestly, I think you made the right call. I think she made the right call too. Uh, Could you imagine being married to somebody who referred to Our Lady Peace as Our Lady? No, no. Honestly, if Catherine came downstairs mm-hmm. right now, I'd be like, "Whoa, you drove back from Pittsburgh really <laughs> quick!" And then <laughs> she's in Pittsburgh right now for for work. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, if she was just like, "Yeah, I'm super into theory, and uh, I love Our Lady," I would be like, "Who?" <laughs> Are you? <laughs> this is a uh, that when I asked her who her oh favorite song was like, I don't know, Dvorak's New World Symphony. Like, that's who my wife is. So she was like, I love our lady. I'd be like, ah. Uh. She told me that she loved our lady. She's cutting out of the blessed sacrament. <laughs> I love the idea of Catherine saying, yeah, I was just listening to some theory in the car, driving back. 
just listen, just listen, you know, into deep cuts. None of that, none of the radio, no, shit. none of that radio shit. I don't I like, listen to hate my life. I listen to the deep cut stuff, deep cut theory. Uh, that's the list, you guys. Uh, newmetalagenda.com, 15 greatest and 10 worst post grunge songs of all time. Once again, hats off and a deep bow to the crew over there. Uh, Holiday Kirk, Gabby Brown, Tara Eyes, Balloon XM, and Josh Ryo. Always doing the damn thing. Doing the damn thing, and we love a list. And thank you, everybody, who sent that list to us. Uh, Matt. Making sure we don't drop the ball. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Matt, let's talk about it. Let's talk about who's festing. Who's festing. Not me. Matt's not festing. And honestly, the contents of this fest, not the most important thing. But what we're talking about is rock fest. Rock fest, where we just rock. That's right, Matt. This is rock fest. It's coming up July. Uh, let's see what we got here. July uh, 18th Ooh. through the 20th. Okay. Cad- uh, is that Cadet? Cado, Wisconsin? We'll call it Cado, Wisconsin. Cado, Wisconsin. Call, drop your, stop your grinning and drop your linen. It's Rockfest, Cado, Wisconsin, 2024. All right. So you, your headliners, 30 Seconds to Mars, Shine Down, and Jelly Roll. Some of your sub headliners, Fever 333, Chevelle, Parkway Drive, From Ashes to New, 311, Kill Switch, Seven Dust, Dirty Honey. But the most important thing to come out of this is that for the first time in the history of Rockfest, which I found this to be an incredible bit of information to learn, Matt, that Rockfest has been going on for years, all right? This is a fest where they just rock, okay? That's in their tagline. We've talked about Rockfest before on this show. For the first time ever, and they released an official statement on it. They said, new for 2024. Moshing. Wild. They've never allowed it before. And this, I'm just going to read the statement. In the past, we've held back on moshing at Rockfest to ensure everyone's safety, which is our top priority. We know, however, that moshing is a vital part of Rocker's release and metal experience for many of you. We've listened to your feedback and are excited to introduce a moshing area at the Budweiser Boneyard stage as a pilot program. This allows us to embrace the energy of moshing while maintaining a safe environment for all festival goers. We're setting up designated zones for both moshers and non-moshers, ensuring everyone can still enjoy the show up close. Please note, for everyone's safety, hardcore dancing styles or flail moshing will not be permitted. Let's rock responsibly, keep an eye out for our brothers and sisters, and make this a memorable addition to Rockfest 2024. Hmm. Matt, I love safety. I love it. Big fan of safety. Big fan of safety. All right. Let me just put that out there. But then dare I say, this is one of the lamest things I've ever read. <laughs> this is tough. This is tough because it's hard to be like rocking when you're also being parental. I'm imagining safety monitors looking for hardcore dancing styles and flail moshing. Like, I honestly, I would love to be in the training. I'd love to see the training that they're going to be undergoing to determine the differences in this. In this, are they going to be watching like footage from like old Fugazi sets? Are they going to be pulling up some Hate Five Six videos? That's what I was going to say. Just watch a recent Hate Five Six <laughs> video. Just watching those, watch some scowl sets. So what? <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I it's am, it's I, tough I, because I don't know how well this obviously sells well. So there's a lot of people here, and it seems to be in the woods, right? So yeah, if you're on uneven surfaces. For sure, major risk there. Broken ankles. Broken ankles, baby. Got to be careful. You got to be. But at the same time, I like that they are trying to allow it in a way, but also saying that you're allowing it feels 
this feels awful. This just feels like, oh, I'm just imagining just being a grown person, a grown man, and being like, we can mosh this year. Yeah. I. Well, the older I get, the less interested I am in moshing. So, like, I appreciate the no moshing attitude. But, like, yeah, like, if you're younger, I don't know. This just feels fucking weird and terrible listen we will see you in the designated mosh pit for bear tooth <laughs> and uh just listen as you're moshing behave yourself and also do your research on flail dancing and hardcore yeah. dance styles make sure you know yeah in case that comes up and you know, you'd better case. hope that they have training to differentiate between a flail style and mm -hmm. a skank because mm. if I get kicked out for skanking, I'm going to be pissed. Right. Um, bands that you can skank to. You can probably skank to 311. Um, oh, yeah. I would definitely, if someone wants to take a video of them skanking to cold, that would be very interesting to see. Um, and you know what? Go and skank to two live crew. Do it oh, up. Do it up. Come on. Yeah, do it up. Uh, you can check all that out uh, at rockfest.com. I was about to make up a uh, website, but that's the actual real one. So good for them for getting that. They the locked URL. that down. They locked it way down. Uh, Matt, let's talk about who's in those DMs. Sliding up in. We got a DM from Joe Raisin. Oh, hi, Joe. He said, really enjoyed today's episode. Also with the Patreon, keep pushing it, guys. Stop being so Michigan modest. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Appreciated it. He said, also, just recently discovered this band. It's got it all. Spikes. Baggy jeans with chains attached to it. A bit of a yarl, although acceptable. But all in all, this could be a hidden gem of a calm down era. Okay. Maybe he meant come down. I don't know. Um, he said, also should mention these great disassociated trademark corn looks. The name of the band is Five Foot Thick, and the song is called Unfounded. All right. Let's listen. Matt, I'll let you go first. <laughs> I was in. I am in. I like it. It is most certainly aggressive. Love the yell. But there is a bed of Jarl that's there that is a little like, huh? What's happening? I would say that the aggression overcomes it because big time i with, would I agree with yarls you know we're definitely it's a yarl heavy episode with this uh, but, uh post grunge butt rock talk but what you tend to run into with that is sort of like eh, they're not they're not they're sad they're bummed you know everything's all blurry why is it all blurry probably because they've been crying you know with this guy though he's furious He's had, True. he's upset, but he's mad about it. He's had it up to he's here. had it up to here. And you so for that, it up to here. You know what? I can sometimes think about having it up to here. That's a lot of having here? it. That's a little that too much having it. Yeah, you've had too much. Absolutely. Uh, but what really hit me with this one, Matt, is that I was like, you know what? It's been a while since I heard a song that would fit so perfectly under uh, a compilation of people wiping out on skateboards you know this oh, would true. let me tell you people falling down breaking their wrists skinning their legs you know not landing a flip you know a kick flip you know that's what this is for and uh so I, I i challenge everyone out there to you know make a compilation of your favorite um skateboard fails i believe this is the new soundtrack for it uh but very much enjoyed this uh thank you so much uh Thank you so much to Joe for sending it over to us. Much appreciated. Um, I don't want to spend a ton of time on this, Matt, uh, but Andrew Scott let us know that uh, Old Smoky Tennessee has released a hot dog water whiskey. And this is now the second thing that we've been made aware of, of people doing hot dog flavored water and not involving Limp Biscuit. And I just want to say that it's terrible. It's insulting. We all know who popularized. We, we all know who popularized this, and I know some people might be saying, "Well, Lauren, d does you know does Limp Bizkit need more money?" 
And to which I say, they deserve yeah. it. They deserve it. Give it to them. They they put the record out. They could have named that album anything. And they named it Chocolate Starfish and Hot Dog Flavored Water. And because of that, that's why you know what Hot Dog Flavored Water even is. Respect on the name. Don't be slapping it on your, whatever this is, whiskey. Already disgusting. Hot dog flavored whiskey. Honestly, probably makes it better. Anyway, Andrew, thanks for letting us know. Uh, Andrew also wants a Charles Mansion to try this on the live stream. 10 o'clock, May 2nd. Tune in, see what he does. I'll see if I can find it. <laughs> see if we can find it. Charles uh, 16 years old. I don't know if he can drink. <laughs> no, good point. Good point. We don't want any underage drinking going on there. Uh, finally, we got, an e- uh, we got a DM from Ashes Like Rain, the band, who said, thank you so much for the feature on your podcast, dudes. And the person, Confidential, who requested my song. Ha <laughs> ha. I meant to write you guys earlier, but I've been away and I'm not super active. Thanks again. Amazing work. Awesome. Ashes like rain. Thank you. Rocking and rolling and uh, doing the damn thing. Yeah. Not Matt, full emotion, I can tell you that. Yeah, absolutely. Matt, I think we can we can both agree. Um, and I say that as if you and I are disagreeing all the time, which we are not. Dude, all we do is butt heads. Oh my gosh. Oh, Eight God. years with this? <laughs> just two rams just locking horns the lock always horns. two two fucking alphas always going for the always, top spot always going at it it's like the rock and vin diesel every week on this show we can't stand you can these guys just agree for a minute but one second. one second but i think we can both agree that you're doing the damn thing and we love it when people are doing the damn Thing. hell yeah we love it so thank you so much for sending us that dm keep on sending those dms over sending us those emails road coach podcast at gmail.com matt we and our last two tweeting episode finished off vandals can't handles part two the rest of the roach we finished it off we did we did and we had said you know new lists we're open we're ready roach riders they came through we received a list from one Chad Radical. Love it. The name of this list, Chad Radicals, Rippers for Roaches. Beautiful name. This uh this list is um extensive, has a lot of songs that I am uh, not familiar with. And Matt, um why don't you, you want to kick it off? off? Let's just kick it off, buddy. What do we got to kick off? We have a band called Hemlock with a song called sour here we go you know what what i like about this song is that you know when this guy went home at the end of the day and his wife his girlfriend his mom was like how's recording today he said i don't want to talk about it i can't Leave me alone. Leave me fucking alone. I don't want to talk about it. Don't ask me about what happened today. All right. Well, I'm going upstairs to listen to Our Lady. <laughs> um, I got to wow. tell you, I, uh, you know what? I foolishly had certain expectations. Uh, they were not met, nor were they even considered. Uh, we went in a completely different direction. Um, I respect it. I respect from it. the album Pigeonhold that was sour by Hemlock. Amazing. Uh fucking amazing. Wow. Wow. You know, I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> nope. Wrap I'm, it up, D. <laughs> I'm just done. I'm wrapping it up. All right. There you have it. Well, listen, there's more where that came from on this new list. We're gonna listen to another one. And on the next Who's Tweeting episode. Uh, so thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Thank you. Keep on sending hello. Uh, sending hello. Saying hello. Sending to all the hellos. Send some hellos and say hello to us online. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. We're on all those. Send us an email. Roachcoachpodcast at gmail.com. Join the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Roachcoachpodcast. Slide into those DMs. Say hello that way. 
like and subscribe to the podcast. We never mention this, but it's something that you should do as well. That way, you will not be surprised if we drop an episode early because of a global eclipse. You will know. You will not be surprised because it'll be right there in your feed. Like, hey, new coach. Here it is. Ready to rock. And uh, yeah, until next time, Matt. Thank you. Lauren, thank you. Roach Riders and Indigo Angels. Thank you. All right. Roach, Roach Coach. Podcast. Hot all day, every week. the Roach Coach. Podcast. All day, all day, every day.